in this video we're going to be looking at toast. Toast is, it's really interesting that they're using the word toast. Now maybe this is from me back in the day. Maybe I'm not the person you should be listening to on this, but when I was going and doing Android mobile development in my community college days, they used a toast, which is the message that pops up like it's an overlay. And I thought it was the, I thought it was a really cool, really great idea. But then when I did like iPhone programming, it was, it was so long ago. I was like, where are the toasts at? But then I found out they were only like native to Android. Once again, I may have a hazy memory here, but I just get excited whenever I see toasts. I don't know why. It's not like I enjoyed being an Android programmer. But we're going to be looking at the docs to see how we use these things. They're pretty cool, and I think they're very useful, and you can use them very intelligently, and they provide a lot of good value to the end user. And then it looks like we have a couple examples for y'all, so let's go to the docs. It says the toast is used to show alerts on top of an overlay. The toast will close itself when the close button is clicked or after a timeout. The default is five seconds. The toast component is used to give feedback to the users after an action has taken place. So some apps also, you have to keep in mind that sometimes your end user, especially those that may be giving you the most money, maybe you have some policy driven kind of product, you may want a lot of confirmations if there's not an explicit save button that something they just did is A-OK -okay saved in the system. Now that may not be as much anymore if you're part of the maybe, I don't know, Gen X and after generation, even then you may have some uh, cases, but I know for some industries I've worked in, uh, at least from things I've heard, different apps, UIs, you know, for a while there were save buttons, even though they didn't, they didn't really do what the end user thought. Uh, they were just there for, um, I guess, reassurance. And toasts are a good way to provide that reassurance. So we have a used toast coming on in. It's, it's pretty nice, actually, for what you're going to be able to actually do. It's kind of mischievous or devious or uh, uh, some word in there that makes me sound smart. Uh, what you could do with this, and there's not a lot of imports uh, other than just this. So we have the show toast. I'm editing this in such a way that this is probably cut off from y'all, but at the bottom of the screen, we have this green thing popping up here, and we'll see in the example when we code it out that something's coming up here, but basically it's a button, <laughs> which is interesting, right? Uh, from all the other things, we see this component slapped right in there. And so we have this on-click firing, and then we have the toast in here, which is being brought in as this use toast right here is this like, hook type of um, setup we have here. And then inside, we're just giving it this object that has a title description, status, duration, and is closable. And we fire it off. And once again, y'all probably can't see the bottom of it, uh, depending on how I edit this thing. But it's kind of fascinating. The, re the rest of the things that we've looked at so far are these like straight up components. We, we notice what they look like. They look like, you know, kind of uh, HTML elements. And this is just this, uh, you know, like this function in here you're given an object to. So that's kind of cool. And it says, this is important. Make sure to call use toast at least one component level below Shocker provider because it needs to access, uh, it needs access to the current theme. And so, yes, keep that in mind that you kind of want some spacing, some buffering and, and 99.99999% cases, this will not be a problem. A toast is going to be buried in some kind of header body type of component, some button component, and you're not going to have to worry. But if something starts looking a little funny right here, this is one of the places I would go to debug is, is like how close is it to the chakra provider? We could also have a custom component in here. And of course, I'm editing this and you can't see it pop up, uh, which kind of sucks. So we're going to cover all of this in the examples here, but the position is the bottom left. So if I didn't edit this down to look the way it did in its full screen, the very bottom left of this website will be showing the toast. This is actually kind of the most awkward docs I've ever done because I'm clicking stuff. I'm pretty sure no one can see what's going on, but 
bear with me. And so what we could do in here, which is interesting, is that we had up here the title description, status, duration, all this. But now we have this render attribute in here, right? And it's now housing a box. So not only could a toast just be this out of the box, no pun intended in chakra because everything's a box. Not only could it just be this basic thing you're slapping info into and it works, which may be the case. There's no issue with that. But like with everything in Shakar, you could customize the living crap out of it, which I think is cool that it gives you either way of doing it. So down here we have closing toasts. Uh, it says toast can be closed imperatively, individually via the close uh, instance method or all together um, via the close all instance method. And so we have a lot of stuff going on right here. And so if we were to, you know, bring up a toast, which I'm sure you all can't see. This is really just going through and keeping track of how many toasts are out there and then closing all of them. This is just some function or um, some custom functionality here. I wouldn't read too insanely or incredibly hard into this because... The duration in and of itself is five seconds, but also you could still have the ability to like close it yourself. And sometimes I would be a little wary of examples like this. These are nice examples to have in the docs, but this isn't always the 100% I need to use these refs, wire everything up this way kind of deal. This is just showing you a code example or an idea so let's keep scrolling here we have updating toast and it says toast options can be updated by passing an id and the new options to the update instance method here so some text and then when we click it it says new text once again i apologize for y'all not being able to probably see this which kind of hurts my heart a little bit but we basically have these two buttons right here. We're firing them off and we are have we have the add toast and then we have the update here. And so when we do the add toast, we're basically taking this ref right here and we're adding the toast um, to it. So when we click it, we're essentially just firing it off. And then when we click update up here, we could just fire off a new description text because we have that reference that it's pointing to. I don't know how often you'll need to do this or if you want to do this, but this is a good example of a way to update, you know, some toast if you need to. If you need to change something slightly after an action has taken, although I'd be wary because if still there's only five seconds and then some text changes, they may not catch it, right? So just be wary. And then we have another example of the status here. You could use this to change the color of your toast. Once again, it's the same idea as above. I'm not going to go over this one right here because, well, all of these are kind of the same idea. And I think these are getting a little out of the scope of what I want to do. I'm not trying to overly confuse because, like I said, these things are, you could kind of change them after the fact, right? But, yeah. So let's come down here to the position because I think that's another a big important one here. And we have the positions. We have top, top right, bottom, bottom right, bottom left. And so these are the positions which I was complaining about earlier. I think it was the bottom left that was probably not going to show up in this video when I clicked one of the uh, examples from the docs here. And you have control of where you want these to pop up. Now, you're going to want them to pop up in an intelligent area on your page. And maybe when you're on mobile or tablet, there's maybe some blurring between bottom and like bottom right or bottom left. And that's because you have less width, right? You have less spacing between all those things. On my browser right now, my browser is like 27 inches. So all of these areas are, are defined and very much separated. But just know that there may be not, especially in the size of your message, all the other stuff you're trying to convey, at the bottom or the top, there it just, it just may not matter, right? So we need to keep that in mind as well. And this is an example coming through here that's, you know, putting all these buttons up here. 
they're going to show the toasts appear on different sides of the page. And I think we're going to be able to cover those in the example because I don't think they're going to show up the way I'm editing this. Here's an example to prevent a duplicate toast. In some cases, you might need to prevent duplicate of specific toast to achieve. You need to pass an ID and use the toast.isActive method to determine when to call toast. And so this is just coming in here and click, and you're saying if it is active, you know, if it's not active, then you could go ahead and fire this off here. This is a pretty good idea because otherwise you might be able to stack toasts as, as high as your app goes, and that's kind of ugly. Although I'm sure there's other ways of preventing a toast from firing. You may have some kind of timer or default thing on the button itself, or maybe, um, you know, if, if you save something, it's a navigational kind of effort, and you just change the functionality of that button. But if you want to hard code in, some kind of way to prevent the duplication of a toast popping up. This is one way of doing it here. And so here's a standalone test and it says to create a test from outside of your React component here. And it says, if you're using a custom theme, you must pass it in the argument to create standalone test. If you don't, the default theme will be applied causing the font size of your page to shift when the toast is open. So, this, I don't have an example of this. I don't know when, why, where, how you would you know, want to use this, but if you want to come down in here and you need a case where you need to fire toast from you know outside of a React component, you could do this, but feel free, to, uh, feel free to toy around and play with it. Let me know how it goes in the description below if you need to use this for whatever you know, case you've been given. But here are some props. Feel free to look at them, go over them, Memorize them. I don't memorize anything as a developer, to be honest, but I do like coding, so let's get to coding. So looking at Toast, I think this is going to be one of the larger examples we do, only because there are certain rules about it we have to abide by. And the first we're going to have to do is we can't drop it directly in the Chakra prov provider like we have everything else. It can't be like the... um like first child or or whatever in, under a chakra provider. It just can't. It will look very, very strange. And I learned that the hard way when I was first doing this. So let's go ahead and do this. So now we have this right here. It says toasty because this is a toast reference to Mortal Kombat. Let's go ahead and click this. And we see in the bottom left hand, which is this position right here, we're getting this toast to appear. And it's only going to be a uh, duration. It's only going to last the 3000. I believe this is in the uh, millisecond. So yeah, so it doesn't last super long up here. And so you can see that as we click it, we have only fans created, which is the header up here. The description we've created your OnlyFans account. It is closable, meaning you could click that and remove it. So if I was to click this several times, it just stacks up right here. And its status is success. But what if we wanted to change it? We could go to info. So it's blue. We could go to warning, which is this orange color. And did we already do error? So this is red right here. And the position could change as well. So we could do top. So this pops in right here, which is really helpful. We could do stuff like uh, top right as well. 
And so this is the basics to using a used host. Just know you never slam it straight into the Shocker provider. This is just really for the tutorial sake. You may not really even run into this anyways. But this is super cool because this, this is essentially like a hook function type of thing that you could just jam straight into a button. There's other kinds of, you know, pop-ups and stuff like that where you have to create the button and then you have another component there. Then you just load all the stuff in. And this is really cool when you think about it that you could just nest this functionality straight into a button. That just makes it a whole lot cleaner in my opinion and I think that's super cool. So what we're going to do in the next example is we're going to take the same structure layout we have here but we could actually customize this and start returning like boxes, h stacks, texts in here and we could just override the basic style inside of this toast which I think is kind of mind blowing. So see y'all in a second. So what we're going to do right here now is we're going to just remove the title description, all this other stuff here. And what we could just drop straight in into here is this thing called render. So this is cool. Let's see what this does. So we have this. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this on in. From off the screen here, it's nothing we haven't seen so far. It's very basic stuff. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to add hstack. I'm going to add text. And then I'm going to add, let's see here, the close button. And so we have everything right here. So when we click Toasty, it says you just ordered a thousand tacos right here. And that is pretty sweet. So we could take that original layout, the info and stuff like that, and we could just drop it straight into the render. So think about the other cool stuff you could render in here. So if we just put it at the bottom. Think about just the other things that you could add in here with a render. So not only does the toast provide out of the box a really, really easy way to provide info to a user after an action has taken place. But you could come in and just drop another component straight in here and just give that next level customization to their experience. So if you uh, like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.